by transcription. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. And Palmolive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, many of the traditional basketball rivalries were settled during the past week. And Madison High School, where our Miss Brooks teaches English, was no exception. Their big game with Clay City High was scheduled for Friday night. And last Wednesday morning, while driving her to school, Walter Denton, the team's manager, tried to sell Miss Brooks a ticket. I'm sorry, Walter, but I don't think I'm interested. Don't think you're interested. But Miss Brooks, that's treason. How much are the seats? A buck a piece. If this be treason, make the most of it. <laughs> Look, Walter, I don't want you to think that I'm lacking in school spirit. The reason I haven't attended more games this season is because of embarrassment. Our team was just awful. Sixteen straight defeats, isn't it? This year. Altogether, it's 39. <laughs> but the important game is Friday night with Clay City. I know. I saw the Clay City game last year. I'll never forget how miserable I felt when I left that gym. The score was Clay City 92, Madison 6. You shouldn't have left. They really clobbered us in the second half. <laughs> well, I hope we make a better showing this year, if only to keep our beloved principal's blood pressure from reaching a new high. Well, I don't like to be prematurely optimistic, Miss Brooks, but I met a fellow on our campus yesterday who may make a big difference in the outcome of Friday night's game. You mean through him we have a chance of winning? Definitely. I'm surprised at you, Walter. You should have turned him into the district attorney immediately. <laughs> well, you don't understand. Now, this is a kid who went to Clay City High until his folks moved into our district last week. And now he's going to transfer to Madison. And, Miss Brooks, the minute he told me his name, I knew he'd be a cinch to make our basketball team. Guess who it was? Lionel Barrymore. <laughs> I'm serious, Miss Brooks. Now, this guy happens to be the greatest scholastic basketball player in this area. And what a build on him. He must be six feet four. Who is this super kid, Walter? Well, his name is Tex Barton. Of course... Tex is just a nickname because his family came to Clay City from Texas. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> yeah, his real name is Vic Barton. Uh, don't you remember the fellow who scored over 50 points against us in the game last year? Well, now that you mention it, I do remember a boy named Vic Barton. Well, Tex Barton and Vic Barton are the same person. No wonder he's so tall. <laughs> well, here we are, Miss Brooks. Oh, say, I think that's Tex going toward school now. After you, Miss Brooks. Thanks, Walter. Hey, wait up, Tex. I want to talk to you. Well, if it ain't Walter Denton, I'm sure glad to... Oh, excuse me, ma'am. I, I reckon you're Walter's mother. <laughs> Have another reckon on me. <laughs> this is Miss Brooks, Tex. She teaches English here. English? Yes, it's the language spoken just north of Texas. <laughs> well, I've, I've got to be getting in now. Nice to have met you, Tex. Most people feel that way. <laughs> well, we really didn't meet hardly. Uh, would you mind if I joined you after school and we chinned for a spell? Well, I'm afraid I'll have to take my chin home after school. <laughs> I've got to help Mrs. Davis fix dinner tonight. Now, that's awful decent of you, ma'am. I'll be happy to have dinner with you. Huh? <laughs> you see, my folks will be out visiting tonight. After I spend what I got on me for lunch, I won't be able to afford no dinner unless I gets me an invite. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, down home, we don't think twice about sharing a grub with a stranger. Yes, sir, there's nothing like splitting your chow to help you get acquainted. Well, get a pencil. I'll tell you how to get to my chuck wagon. <laughs> be necessary, Miss Brooks. I'll bring Tex over myself at six o'clock sharp. And ma'am, thanks a heap for the invite. <laughs> You're welcome. 
welcome, Hoppy. <laughs> Miss Brooks, uh, suppose you take Tex into Mr. Conklin's office. You can help him get registered real quick. And speed is of the essence, as you know. Yes, I do. All right, Walter, you park your car, and I'll take Tex in with me. That's mighty obliging of you, ma'am. Uh, do you think the principal will be willing to swear me in this morning? Well, it's all according to his mood, Tex. I can promise you one thing, though. When we get to his office, you'll either be sworn in or at. <laughs> Mr. Conklin's office is right down this hall, Tex. Well, all right, Daddy, but you don't have to bite my head off. Hello, Miss Brooks. Daddy's having one of his tantrums again. I... Well, what have we here? Oh, this is Tex Barton, Harriet. Tex, this is Harriet Conklin. Howdy. <laughs> Hello. You're a long one, aren't you? <laughs> Down, ma'am. And cuter than most. Are you going to be a student here? I sure hope so. Now. Say, you're really something. I try to be. <laughs> and if I ain't too bold, miss, I wouldn't exactly call you a little old lump of sugar, but I wouldn't want to leave you too close to my little old pindo either. <laughs> <laughs> I know what to tell my little old stomach. <laughs> now, you'll have to excuse us, Harriet. We've got to see your father right away. All right, Miss Brooks. See you later, Tex. Goodbye. Who goes there? <laughs> two friends, sir. Two unarmed friends. <laughs> Come in. Uh, good morning, Mr. Conklin. I wouldn't disturb you, sir, but it's quite uh, important. One moment, please. So it's finally happened, Miss Brooks. Mr. Boynton has taken you to the zoo once too often. The <laughs> zoo? Don't look now, but one of the giraffes has followed you to school. I'd like you to meet Madison's principal, Mr. Osgood Conklin. Howdy. What do you know? It talks. <laughs> now, uh, what can I do for you? And please be brief. I thought you might check his transfer papers, Mr. Conklin. Tex wants to enroll as soon as possible. Well, I suppose that can be arranged. From what high school are you transferring? Uh, Clay City. Fine. I'm always happy to meet any boy who comes from... Clay City? <laughs> yes, sir. Our principal, Mr. Brill, told me a lot about you, Mr. Conklin. But I'm glad to meet you anyhow. <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> Miss Brooks, kindly remove this elongated St. Bernard from my office. Now, hold on there. Who are you calling a St. Bernard? Oh, don't be angry, Tex. Mr. Conklin didn't mean anything derogatory. You two have got to be friends. Now, go ahead, Tex. Give him your paw. I mean, shake hands. <laughs> Step aside, ma'am. Now, listen to me, Mr. Conklin. I... You listen to me. You go right back to Jason Brill and tell him we don't want any of his Clay City dunces cluttering up Madison. Oh, please, Mr. Conklin. You can't know on this short notice whether Tex is a dunce or not. That's right. You ain't got no proof, no how. <laughs> but if you don't want me to go to your school, I'll just go right on back to Clay City. Oh, and... wait, Tex. You'll be glad to welcome Tex into Madison, Mr. Conklin, if you'll just let me tell you why you've got to accept him. I have got to accept no one. Madison High is my kingdom, Miss Brooks, and the choice of the subjects therein is my choice and mine alone. The interview is at an end. But, Mr. Conklin... That I... is all. This, Miss... <laughs> aye, aye, sir Come on, Tex, I'll show you to the door Tex, I'll talk to him alone and bring you back when he's in a better mood Okay, Miss Brooks You've sure been mighty decent to me, ma'am Hasta la vista Mm-hmm <laughs> Adios, hombre Uh, Mr. Conklin Sir Sire. Yes? Far 
be it from me to question your motives, but I'm afraid you've hurt that boy's feelings. Well, perhaps I was a bit harsh with the lad, but he caught me at a bad time. I just hung up on Jason Brill when you both arrived. That malevolent old devil phoned just to taunt me about the basketball game Friday night. He got me so upset, I bet him a new hat on the outcome of the game. Before I remembered the results of last year's contest. That was disastrous, wasn't it? They clobbered us. <laughs> I dug up the newspaper account of the game from my file. I've got it right here. Now, look at this headline. Clay City ekes out victory over Madison 124 to 7. <laughs> that must have been quite a second half. There's an interesting subhead, too. It says, wild-eyed spectator leaps on court and bites basketball. Ushers eject Osgood Conklin. <laughs> that story is a bald-faced lie. I know it is, Mr. Conklin. I was there. You bit the referee. <laughs> I merely broke his whistle. <laughs> what burns me up the most, though, is this reminder that after the game... Madison was presented with the symbol of defeat, Cornelius the Goat. Let's see. Oh, here's that part. Cornelius must be fed and housed on the campus of the losing team for the entire school year. After four years of defeat, the goat becomes the permanent property of the humiliated institution. Well, that's a switch on a loving cup. <laughs> uh, let me remind you, Miss Brooks, that Madison has lost three games in a row to Clay City. If we lose this one, that bleating monstrosity will be on our hands forever. Mr. Conklin, do you remember a boy named Barton who scored over 50 points against us for Clay City? Barton, Barton. Oh, of course I remember now. He ran us ragged. Well, that happens to be Tex Barton, the boy you just gave the old heave-ho. What? And he wanted to transfer to Madison? Miss Brooks. Dear Miss Brooks. <laughs> We've got to do something. You've got to do something. Anything. Calm down, Mr. Conklin. All isn't lost. He's coming to my house for dinner tonight, and I'm sure I can undo some of the damage your temper has done. Uh, that is my problem, Miss Brooks. I'll be happy to have dinner at your house tonight. <laughs> After all, in Texas, we always say there's nothing like splitting your chow to help get better acquainted. So I've heard. And the way I figure, if and I can wrestle up enough grub... We might get so well acquainted, we'd never have to talk to each other again. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. Spot a toothpaste. What cleans your teeth? Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. Spot a toothpaste. Why cleans your teeth? Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helped stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The Colgate way stopped tooth decay best. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, offers such conclusive proof. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, when lunchtime arrived, I hurried to the school cafeteria to meet Mr. Boynton for lunch. But he was over ten minutes late. From the explanation he gave when he did arrive, it was obvious he had been detained by someone even nearer and dearer to his heart than I am. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, but I had to stop by the gym and untie Cornelius, the goat. I... <laughs> I'm the only person at school who pays any attention to the poor beast. I know. Pull up a window and sit down. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, before I forget, I brought a little surprise in for you. It's a box of French chocolates. For me? But it isn't my birthday or Christmas or anything. I know it. Can't I give you a box of candy if I feel like it? You certainly can. And it's very sweet of you, Mr. Boynton. I wish I could do something to show my appreciation. Well, now that you mention it, I'll be very happy to have dinner at your house tonight. (laughs) Good. For a minute there, I thought I'd have to keep coaxing you. (laughs) You'll be more than welcome, Mr. Boynton, but I think I should warn you. There'll be quite a crowd over tonight. You see, when I was in Mr. Conklin's office this morning... Oh, Walter Denton told me all about it, Miss Brooks. As I understand it, Mr. Conklin insulted the boy, and now he's got to woo him into playing basketball for Madison. Heavens knows the team can use him, and I'd like to help get him into the fold. What time does the wooing begin, Miss Brooks? Shall we say about nine o'clock? Nine? Yes, I should be able to get rid of text by 8.30. <laughs> Dinner's almost ready, Connie. You've been a big help, dear. But I didn't do anything, Mrs. Davis. I know, but you stayed out of my way all afternoon. (laughs) Now you better get back into the living room and join Tex. Oh, he's all right, Mrs. Davis. I gave him last Sunday's funnies to read and a box of French chocolates to nibble on. You know, you wouldn't think to look at that kid that he's Vic Barton, the famous Clay City basketball star. He'd have to be something like that. But why is Mr. Conklin so anxious to get him to enroll at Madison? Oh, it's a long story, Mrs. Davis. I'll give you a rundown after dinner. Oh, pardon me, ladies, but uh, I got a little lonesome in the living room. Uh, The Louflurpas are all gone, Miss Brooks. The Louflurpas? Those French candies you gave me to nibble on. Uh, I'll set the box on the sink. Uh, Is there something I can do to help get chow ready, Miss Davis? Yes, there is, Tex. You can get the silverware out, if you will. Oh, that's the front door. I'll answer it. Just make yourself at home, Tex. I will. Well, Tex, Miss Brooks has told me what a basketball star you were at Clay City. Now, I wonder what made her say that. I'm Vic Barton, Miss Davis. Uh, Miss Brooks must have me mixed up with my brother Vince. Oh, shucks. I never played no varsity basketball at Clay City. <laughs> oh, Tex, will you come in here, please? We've got company. Uh, right away, ma'am. I'll be back to help you in a minute, Miss Davis. It's all right, Tex. Take your time. Look who's here, Tex. It's it's Mr. Conklin. Well, slip us five, Pod. What's the matter with him? Well, Mr. Conklin wants you to know that... (laughs) that he was just teasing this morning when he threw you out of his office. Why, of course, my boy. I do that to all new pupils. It's sort of an initiation. Now, although we don't place too much emphasis on athletics at Madison, I just knew you'd want a star in some sport or other, so I brought you this all-wool sweater, and I had your varsity letter sewn on it in advance. You see, a big M. What, Clay City? We always spelt varsity with a V. (laughs) But uh, if you was only funnin' this morning and you really want me to join up, I guess I can think it over a spell longer. Uh, Please do, my boy. I got to get back to the kitchen now. Uh, Miss Davis wants me to get out the silverware. Silverware? And risk cutting those beautiful basket shooting hands on a sharp knife? I should say not. I'll get the silverware myself. Be right there. Well, come in, Mr. Boynton. Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, this must be Tex. Howdy. Uh, this is Mr. Boynton, Tex. Howdy. <laughs> brought this little gift for you. It's a sort of a welcome to Madison present. Gosh, what is it, Mr. Boynton? It's a knee pad, a brand new one. Those are the best kind. <laughs> I'm sure grateful, Mr. Boynton. Uh, I'd offer you one of the French chocolates Miss Brooks gave me, but I'm afraid they're plum gone. French chocolates? Were... Miss Brooks, that, that's the same candy I gave... Oh, we're doing a big business tonight. Come on in, it's open. Hiya, folks. Here you are, Tex, old boy. Here's a little present for you. For me? Yeah, I noticed you ride a bicycle, so I bought you this master padlock to put on it when you leave it in front of school. You mean somebody might steal it? Please, Tex, that's one thing about Madison High. There's never been a master padlock stolen. (laughs) I don't get it. Why is everybody being so all fired nice to me? 
First, Mr. Conklin gives me a sweater, then Mr. Boynton brings me a knee pad. You give me this lock, and, of course, Miss Brooks gave me a whole box of Lou Flirpa chocolates. What? But that's the same candy I gave Mr. Boynton last night. Walter! <laughs> We'd better send the box to J. Edgar Hoover. Must be enough fingerprints on it to keep him busy for months. <laughs> Tex, would you please put a new light bulb in the kitchen ceiling for me? We don't have a step ladder. Be right. <laughs> I'll be right with you, Miss Davis. Uh, excuse me, folks. Uh, I'll be back before you can say Sam Houston. You can say Dick Dallas, too. I've got to talk to Walter. So, you gave this candy to Mr. Boynton, Walter. Would you mind telling me what prompted that unusual action? It's a lie. The fact that Mr. Boynton gave us a biology test this morning, which if I didn't pass would make me ineligible to manage the basketball team Friday night, has nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh, you did. I'm surprised at you. Why, that's nothing short of bribery. And I suppose I'll have to reimburse you for the chocolates you indirectly donated. Oh, that won't be necessary, Miss Brooks. I got them for nothing from Mr. Conklin. Only he doesn't know it. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, I helped Harriet burn some rubbish yesterday, so she told me to help myself to some candy on the way out of her house. Well, I didn't see the jelly bean she meant for me to take, so I just latched onto the box of French chocolates. It wasn't until today that Harriet told me that old Marvel had bought the chocolates for a special occasion. Gee, if he finds out I swiped him, he'll drub me till I'm simple. <laughs> Oh, that's absurd, Walter. Mr. Conklin wouldn't lay a hand on you. It's not his hand I'm worried about. <laughs> when he gets through drop kicking the seat of my pants, he'll look like the lobby of Grauman's Chinese. <laughs> well, take it easy, Raffles. Nobody's going to put the finger on you around here. Well, everything's working out just splendidly, Miss Brooks. If you... Oh, hello, Mr. Martin. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Conklin. Sir. I have the honor to inform you all of the fact that, thanks to my warm and endearing personality, Tex Barton has consented to enroll at Madison High immediately. Oh, that's wonderful, Oh, Mr. congratulations, <laughs> sir. You're a little Marblehead. <laughs> Now, you men stay right here. I'll go out and get the dishes to the dinner table. I thought I'd better get the dishes, Mrs. Davis. All right, dear. I just checked what we'll need on the kitchen table. Did uh, Mr. Conklin tell you the thrilling news about Tex here? Yes, he did. Well, needless to say, Tex, we're all delighted to have Clay City's top basketball star as a Madison pupil. Hold on a minute, Miss Brooks. Uh, about that basketball stuff, there's something you ought to know. You mustn't try to carry so many dishes at once, Connie. Oh, I can manage them all. What were you saying, Tex? Well, it's like I was telling Miss Davis. Uh, you must have me mixed up with my brother, Vince Barton. I never played no basketball for Clay City. <laughs> We heard a crash. What happened? Hey, what is it, Miss Brooks? Nothing. I merely dropped a few dishes. Oh, well, let us help you pick them up. Here, I'll take the plates. And I'll take the soup bowls, and I'll take the cups and saucers. You've got to be more careful, Miss Brooks. Here, you can hold this large platter. Thank you. Shocks. I don't know what made Miss Brooks get so skittish all of a sudden. Oh, just forget it, boy. Forget it. I don't understand. All I said to her was that she had me mixed up with my brother Vince, and that I never played no basketball for Clay City. <laughs> Well, let's make it unanimous. <laughs> of course, there's one point I think I ought to clear up. I said I never played no basketball for Clay City. But I didn't say I never played no basketball. It's just that this being my freshman year, I wasn't able to straighten out my credits till a couple of weeks ago. Nevertheless, the fact remains. I don't like to brag. After I worked out with the team for a few days, why, all the coaches agreed my brother Vince was almost as good as I am. Nevertheless, the fact remains. <laughs> and 
Vince was almost as good as you are? Yes, sir. If I said it once, I'll say it twice. This calls for a celebration. Is dinner ready, Mrs. Davis? Not quite, Connie. It'll take about a half hour yet. Why don't you all go in the living room and wait? Oh, but I'm starved. If I could just take something with me to nibble on, I'd say, what's this? Loufle for chocolate. Well, <laughs> I see we have another prankster in our midst. A prankster? Yes, yes. This candy is, is sold only in novelty shops. I bought mine early this year for fear they'd run out. I'm going to send a box to Jason Brill on April 1st. <laughs> but I don't understand, Mr. Conklin, what's in the chocolate. Uh, what isn't in them? There's enough pepper and spice in each one to have Brill clutching his bloated bay window for hours. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, are you positive these are the same kind of chocolates you bought, Mr. Conklin? Loop Lerper? Loop Lerper is simply April Fool spelled backwards. <laughs> Funny, wouldn't it? Well, that's the beauty of this particular brand. It's got a sweet coating that disguises the pepper. It takes about an hour to work, but once it catches on, oh, brother. <laughs> oh, brother. Tex, Tex, speak to me. Why are you turning that color? I'm a getting out of here. Getting out? But why? What's wrong, boy? I'm a going back to Clay City. No, but Tex, you... at least nobody never tried to poison me down there. I'm beginning to feel like an emotional yo-yo. <laughs> well, you'll find it out sooner or later, Mr. Conklin. Tex ate a whole box of those candies. What? But how did he get them? Uh, uh, they were a gift. A gift? But he's liable to be laid up for a week. And if he doesn't play Friday night, we're certain to get possession of that reeking goat Cornelius! <laughs> now then, Mr. Boynton, Denton, Miss Brooks... I demand to know who gave that candy to Tex Barton. Mr. Conklin, I can disclose the identity of the culprit with one word. And that word is... <laughs> Eve Arden is our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... You get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves by shaving the palm olive brushless way. Get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves the palm olive brushless way. Boom. Hey, that's a fact, men. You can get smoother, yes, more comfortable shaves the palm olive brushless shaving cream way. Just rub velvet smooth palm olive brushless into your beard. Whiskers actually protect your skin by providing a soft film that floats your razor's cutting edge. Remember, over 1,200 men tested the palm olive brushless shaving cream way following directions on the package. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four reported beards easier to cut, less razor pull, smoother, more comfortable, yes, more comfortable shaves. So men, try the palm olive brushless way yourself. Even in cold or hard water, you get a close, clean shave. And a smoother, more comfortable, yes, a more comfortable shave. You get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves the palm olive brushless way. Boom. Next time you shave, try the palm olive brushless shaving cream way. Now, once again, here is Eve Arden. This week, the Colgate Palmolive Peak Company salutes the Girl Scouts of the United States of America on their 39th birthday. Their ceaseless work, training, and activities have proved to all of us that good scouts today are good citizens tomorrow. Congratulations, Girl Scouts. This is Vern Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palmolive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Joe Quillen, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. <laughs> Listen to this. With Marvellous Bell, V-E-L, you can save 90% of dishwashing work.